Hi, chemistry students. Let's talk about Henry's Law, which is a law which is going to show how gases and liquid uh, solvents interact and make mixtures. We're going to try to build this by creating a physical understanding which will lead to a mathematical relationship. First thing we have to ask ourselves is what in the world are we talking about when we say something dissolves in a liquid solvent? Well, I want you to imagine what you think of when those words are said, what do we mean when we say solution? What, if you're making one, what, what comes in mind? Well, most people think about maybe mixing two liquids together like our mad scientist over here on the right and making some kind of crazy concoction. But in the lab, you probably are used to adding a solid, a soluble solid to the container. And for this reason, we've, we've actually put to memory some solubility rules so we can find out and predict what's gonna happen if we put something into water as our solvent. But gases are soluble too. That's right. And this is really important for a lot of the life that we see in the world because fish and other sea beer uh, born creatures can breathe the oxygen that's dissolved in the waters. So just to remind you, humans, we extract oxygen using lungs. Fish, they use gills. Both of us are breathing the oxygen in a different way. So when we're talking about this, we've got to get a few of our ideas kind of down and make sure we're, we're on the same page with understanding what we're talking about. So here's a container with a liquid in it, and here's this liquid, and there's this empty space above it. Now what we really know happens is most of the time that liquid's going to have a little bit of a vapor over it, which creates a vapor pressure. And the vapor is really the exact same molecule as the liquid that's down here. It's just some of them that have evaporated. We don't really care about those. What we're really interested in this case is a foreign gas. By foreign, I mean a different type. So here's a different gas altogether, and it's above this solution. I'm sorry, it's above the liquid right now. And we're going to do a couple things. First off, we're going to imagine the vapor not being there. It just simplifies the picture, as you can see. And the process that we're going to be interacting with is this idea that somehow, some of these molecules that are gas, some of these gas particles are going to find their way into the liquid and they're going to be dissolved. And now this is a mixture, so we call it a solution. So this is a solution. It was right before this, a pure liquid. We got a pure gas, pure liquid, and now we've got a mixture down here of the liquid and the gas. That's a solution. Fantastic. So why did that gas dissolve? What happened to make it, a, to make it go into the, the liquidy state, whatever we're going to call that? Well, first off, in the gas phase, the, the gas particle to gas particle intermolecular forces are obviously negligible. That's why they're a gas. But this is a different intermolecular force between the gas and the solvent. So this one might be significant. If it's strong enough, it's possible to have one of these molecules collide with the surface and be attracted by intermolecular forces to the solvent. So there's random collisions because these guys are just moving around randomly. And there's very, a very good possibility that some of those collisions will result in a solute solvent interaction, which will capture another way of saying dissolve the gas. So you'd imagine then that if we have a strong intermolecular force, a strong solute solvent, IMF, that that's going to make it more likely for the gas to actually dissolve. And so we've got an idea now of what's going on. Collisions between the gas and the liquid surface are going to allow strong interactions to occur. And sometimes they will occur, sometimes they won't. But if we have stronger intermolecular forces, it's even more likely. So once again, it's a game of probability. So we can ask the question then, what affects this solubility? And this solubility means how many of these molecules can I actually get into the, into the solvent at a particular temperature and a particular pressure? So what we just saw was the intermolecular force matters. But what else? What else could make the difference? Well, we're talking about collisions with the gas and the liquid surface. So if we can increase those collisions, we should increase the opportunity for a dissolve to happen, a capture to happen. So how would we do that? How would we increase the collisions? Think about it for a second. I'm hoping that you immediately said, well, what if I added some more molecules? If I had more moles, shouldn't that make 
more collisions here. And shouldn't that add a few more dissolved molecules so we have more dissolved? And that's exactly right. In addition to that, we could also look at it a different way. What if instead of adding more gas, we made the volume a little bit smaller? So the volume is now smaller, so this number of molecules of gas is colliding more often, and with more collisions, we're going to get more dissolved. So what we've seen is if we increase the number of moles or if we decrease the volume, we will get more collisions. Well, there's one parameter which tells us that same story of increasing the number of moles, increasing solubility, decreasing the volume, and that thing right there is called pressure. If I increase the pressure of a gas that's over a liquid, I will increase its solubility. I've essentially given you Henry's Law right here. It's about pressure and it's about the types of intermolecular forces that you can make. So let's put it all in kind of a summary here. Henry's Law is a solubility depends on the solvent-solid interaction. That's the intermolecular forces. If we have different molecules, we're going to have a different interaction. So let's give that interaction a symbol. Let's call it K sub H, where that means the Henry's Law constant. And just remember this, if it's a stronger interaction, we're going to expect a larger Henry's Law constant and therefore more solubility, an increase in the solubility. Similarly, if we increase the pressure of the gas over the solvent, we should expect to see an increase in the solubility. Two things increase it, the interaction strength and the pressure of the gas. We can summarize this real quickly as Henry's Law, and that says that the solubility of a gas that's over a liquid is equal to the Henry's Law constant, which tells us about the types of interactions there are and how strong they are, and then the pressure of that gas. Let's look at this one more time because it's important to know where these terms come from and what they mean. And by the way, you're going to have to put this relationship in your memory banks because we're not going to give you this on an exam. So first off, the solubility. This is the amount of gas that can dissolve in the liquid. And what it depends on are the pressure, the amount of gas in the space over the liquid. All right, if I have more gas over that space or if I have a smaller space, that's going to tell me how many collisions there are going to be. So if I increase that pressure, I'm going to get more collisions. Also, if I have a constant value here, this constant called the Henry's Law constant, it's going to represent the type of liquid we have, the type of gas we have, because if I know those two things, I'll know how strong the intermolecular forces are. And by the way, this thing depends on temperature. If I change the temperature, that constant will change. So you can imagine then for every type of liquid and every type of gas, there's a Henry's Law constant. And this Henry's Law constant changes with temperature. That's a lot of constants. So let's see if you can figure some things out now that you know what Henry's Law is and what it tells us. So take a little time, read these over, and give it a try. If you get a chance, put them on your discussion board or talk about them in class and uh, see if you understand Henry's Law.